Hello, and welcome to today's webcast brought to you by the Center on Knowledge Translation for Disability and Rehabilitation Research, or KTDRR, at American Institutes for Research. The Center on KTDRR is funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research, known as NIDLR, in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Community Living. I am Joanne Starks with the Austin Office of American Institutes for Research, or AIR, and I want to thank some of my colleagues who are helping out with today's event, including Ann Outlaw, Stephen Boydston, and Kathleen Murphy. This webcast will describe the new Disability Coordinating Group recently approved by the Campbell Collaboration, which is an international research network that promotes positive social and economic change through the production and use of systematic reviews and other evidence synthesis for evidence-based policy and practice. This will just be a brief introduction to Campbell and to the Disability Coordinating Group. First, I want to review some basic features of the Adobe Connect platform. You should be listening to the presentation through your computer speakers. To increase the volume, you can use your own computer audio settings. There's also a speaker icon in the control bar at the top left-hand side of the screen, and this icon is green when it's active. You can adjust the volume using the arrow next to the speaker icon. The presentation slides are available in the center of the screen. On the bottom right side is a box labeled Presentation Materials, where you can download a PDF file of these slides as well as a text version. The slides on the computer screen may be a bit small, so having the file or a printout could be helpful. Um, if you do have any problems, you can call our toll-free number at 1-800-266 1832 or send email to ktwebcasts with an S at AIR.org. On the left side of the screen you'll find the chat box. If you have any questions or would like to make a comment, please type into the chat box and I'll make sure to read your comment and question to our presenters. Please feel free to ask a question at any time during the presentation and we hope to have some time at the end for a question and answers. Now I'd like to introduce our facilitator, Dr. Marcel Dykers. He's a member of the advisory board of the newly approved Disability Coordinating Group. He also serves as facilitator of the Center on KTBRR's Community of Practice on Evidence and Disability and Rehabilitation Research. Dr. Dykers is research professor in the Department of Rehabilitation Medicine and senior investigator in the Brain Injury Research Center at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Also joining us this afternoon will be Carlton Fong, who is managing and associate editor for the Education Coordinating Group, and will be serving as the first editor for the Disability Coordinating Group of the Campbell Collaboration. We are hoping to have Oliver Vent join us later on. He will be serving along with me as a co-chair of the Disability Coordinating Group. We'll also have with us Anne Williams Outlaw and Kathleen Murphy of the AAR staff, who also have roles working with this coordinating group. Thanks, everyone, and now let's get started. Marcel? Okay, thank you. Uh, I noticed that Oliver Wendt already has uh, joined us, uh, so we uh, hope that uh, at the appropriate uh, place in this uh, session he will uh, say a few words. Uh, welcome everybody who has uh, joined the uh, activities of the community of practice previously and welcome if you're uh, new. Um, yeah, what we want to do today is just have a yeah, quick session, about half an hour, to yeah, talk about what's happening uh, at the Campbell Collaboration, specifically yeah, with respect to uh, collecting, analyzing, and disseminating uh, evidence uh, related to the life and well-being of people with a disability. So our agenda is yeah, a little bit about the Campbell Coloration overall, a uh, quick word about what our systematic reviews uh, and specifically what they are in the Campbell Collaboration, a word about the existing coordinating groups, uh, the disability subgroup of the education coordinator group, 
which now has become the disability coordinating groups um, and your opportunities for submitting ideas for a systematic review, um, you're becoming an active member of the coordinating group and what resources you uh, will have available and you know, whatever questions and answers people have um, as indicated before you can type them in there in the chat box on the left lower hand corner at any time but we'll address them at uh, the very end of the proceedings. So the CAMBA collaboration yeah, established in 2000 to produce systematic reviews in social welfare and related fields. Um, and yeah, its vision is nicely yeah, summarized in uh, yeah, the better evidence for a better world. Uh, so as Joanna already indicated, uh, yeah, the collaboration aims to yeah, promote positive social and economic change through the production and use of systematic reviews and other ways of synthesizing evidence for evidence-based policy and practice. Um, I presume that everybody who is on this call knows what systematic reviews are and of course we don't have the time to uh, have an extensive presentation on you know, the varieties of systematic reviews or how different organizations uh, address them or fail to address them. Um, yeah, the definition here, I think everybody yeah, will agree on. Yeah, a systematic review sums up the best available research on a specific question by synthesizing the results of several studies. And typically, yeah, systematic reviews must have yeah, clear inclusion exclusion criteria for the primary studies. Um, explicit uh, strategy for searching the literature, uh, systematic coding of study characteristics and findings, um, yeah, logical analysis of the studies yeah, the included, and yeah, if possible, uh, meta-analysis. Um, the Campbell collaboration yeah, adds a um, few things that uh, are the minimal requirements for its systematic reviews. Uh, one is that yeah, in order to avoid publication bias, all the systematic reviews must do a systematic search for unpublished reports, yeah, the famous uh, file drawer problem. Um, because the Campbell collaboration is international, typically yeah, the systematic reviews are international uh, with people from various countries, if not continents, yeah, working together. Uh, Campbell requires that yeah, every systematic review is initiated with the writing of a protocol and we have more to say about that later, uh, which protocol is peer-reviewed within the collaboration. Uh, then the extracting information, yeah, f and making decisions on appropriate studies and extracting information yeah, needs to be done by two people independently uh, who, of course, yeah, uh, compare the results and yeah, uh, have various ways available to come to a consensus when they disagree. And then the yeah, final systematic review in Campbell yeah, is <coughs> subject yeah, to peer review and editorial review before it's officially posted in the Campbell library. Here is yeah, the three yeah, major steps with the uh, documents that are part of the uh, Campbell systematic reviews. 
And uh, Carlton, would you uh, like to say something about these three things? Sure. I can go ahead and explain um, the process for the Campbell systematic reviews. There are three phases um, that Campbell implements. And the first phase is the title stage. Um, and this is where um, you allow the disability coordinating group to determine if your review is in line with the scope of Campbell and whether it's you know, different enough from the previous uh, reviews that have been done um, in the Campbell Library. So it really gives um, the editorial team um, an idea of what your research question is, um, the basic information and background about the topic, the various populations or, or outcomes you're trying to target, as well as information about the intervention you're trying to study. This document just goes through editorial uh, review, and we just deem that it's a viable topic for a systematic review within Campbell. The second phase, as Marcel mentioned, is a protocol phase. And this one is a much more detailed document that outlines um, your procedures for conducting this review. And so whether um, your search strategy, whether the databases, um, your analytic method, the search terms, whether those are all well-defined, systematic, and unbiased, and essentially meeting the standards of Campbell collaboration. This will go through peer review, and it gets sent to a methods reviewer, uh, information retrieval a reviewer, and two content peer reviewers. So it's quite rigorous in terms of the peer review. And the editorial staff will also review the protocol as well. So it, makes, it, it ensures that our author teams are prepared and ready to conduct a Campbell review. So this protocol is a very important document. And then lastly, of course, the third document is the completed review in which the protocol is implemented and the meta-analysis or review is summarized and detailed in this final document with implications for policy, for practice, and a discussion of kind of the state of the field. So these three phases are um, the general process for the Campbell Systematic Review. And also, that, that third phase goes through a full peer review as well, where it gets sent out to a methods, a methods reviewer and two content reviewers as well. Thank you. Um, Campbell, at the moment, works through uh, yeah, six different groups. Uh, for uh, on focused on topic areas, crime and justice, education, international development, uh, social welfare, and at the very bottom is the new disability coordinating group, uh, which until recently was a subgroup of education. Uh, in addition, there is a methods group and a knowledge translation and implementation group, uh, which focus very much on the yeah, smooth transition of yeah, evidence in formats that are maximally useful uh, to people who can uh, use the information. Um, so the education coordinating group was uh, well, has been in existence yeah, longer than 2000, but uh, its disability subgroup was established uh, in 2008 uh, following a request to do so from John Westbrook, who until his uh, death last year uh, was one of the key people working for AIR. Uh, American Institutes of Research. Um, and the idea was to help connect individuals yeah, in their interest in conducting a systematic review with expert, uh, experienced reviewers with yeah, experience and expertise in disability uh, as consultants, yeah, co-authors, or whatever other roles they might play. 
the idea always was for the subgroup to became uh, become a coordinating group. Yeah, if growth in yeah number of people contributed and production of systematic reviews yeah in this specific area would justify such and that actually happened the board of campbell approved the yeah, elevation of the subgroup to uh, a coordinating group on may 5 may 5th of uh, uh, this month so uh, as soon as possible we put this call together uh, to disseminate this news. Um, the American Institutes for Research yeah, have uh, pledged financial support uh, yeah, for editorial and peer review infrastructure for a five-year period, uh, which yeah, should uh, yeah, help a lot yeah, uh, keeping the momentum that yeah, was started going. So what the yeah, coordinating group, which is yeah, uh, chaired or co-chaired by Oliver Wendt and Joanne uh, Starks, yeah, wants to uh, do what its key objectives are, is to undertake and maintain a series of high quality and timely systematic reviews of interventions aimed at improving the quality of life and outcomes of individuals with disabilities and to establish uh, this network of expertise uh, of people who want to contribute in yeah, whatever way uh, they can make available. Uh, the group also wants to yeah, uh, involve a uh, wide uh, spectrum of people with uh, stakeholders, yeah, uh, people with disabilities, their family members, and other disability-oriented stakeholders in all steps of the systematic review yeah, development process. Um, yeah, including the interpretation yeah, of review results. And if you are reading on the left pane on your computer screen, you will see that we have among our audience T.F. Miller, who's a volunteer, G.F. Strong, out in uh, Van uh, uh, British Columbia, who works with Murray Louise, uh, no last name given, in community implementation. So uh, welcome, TF, and uh, I hope yeah, what is being presented here is of interest to you. And then the yeah, group wants to offer training opportunities yeah, for authors and potential authors yeah, to uh, make a maximally effective and efficient in producing uh, systematic review uh, reviews under the Campbell umbrella. Uh, well, what have they done this far? What happened between 2008 when the subgroup was established and May of this year, which is this May, um, the uh, subgroup shepherded into existence 27 or 28 uh, systematic reviews uh, and only four of those yeah, are listed here to give you some indication yeah, of what the topics are and yeah, there are some names uh, mentioned of people who yeah, perform this work. Uh, the first two of these uh, were created with uh, by grant supported groups the grants yeah coming from uh, the National Institute on Disability Independent Living and Rehabilitation Research uh, that doesn't mean that the grant specifically funded the uh, systematic review uh, but uh, either the grant recipients 
had proposed a systematic review as part of their activities or uh, they saw a systematic review as a logical extension of their other activities and yeah, got permission to uh, contribute to those uh, systematic reviews. Uh, we already threw out the names, Oliver Wendt, Joanne Starks, who are the co-chairs, uh, Carlton Fong, who spoke uh, before uh, as the editor, and uh, Anne williams Arklaw, who is handling the technical issues of this uh, webcast as the managing editor. Uh, Oliver, you want to say something at this point? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Marcel. Thank you, uh, Carlton, for giving us a great overview on the systematic review production process and the objectives for the Disability Coordinating Group. I have the pleasure, together with Joanne Starks, to serve as the co-chair. I've had a few years of experience with the Education Coordinating Group, and also over the past few years have been involved with um, Joanne Starks and some of her activities at the American Institutes for Research, been doing quite a few webcasts and training activities on knowledge translation and research training. Um, so we, I think we're off to an excellent start here with getting the Disability Coordinating Group um, set up. Our duties as co-chairs, what Joanne and I will be doing is internally making sure that the systematic review production process gets off to a good start, that we are soliciting high quality reviews, that we are supporting our review teams at all stages and that we're being productive and that we're meeting the, the aims set by the Campbell collaboration for establishing this coordinating group. We will also be serving as representatives to the outside, to the larger Campbell community and interacting with Campbell and other entities on larger issues surrounding systematic reviews. A um, little bit more on my own background. I'm a researcher in the Department of uh, Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences and Educational Studies at Purdue University. My own research background is in treatment research and autism spectrum disorders. I have quite a little bit of experience in, uh, in the systematic review production, particularly meta-analyses and systematic reviews of single subject experiment designs are my specialty and my expertise, and I've mentored quite a few um, systematic review teams on those issues. And with that having said, I'll turn it over to Joanne and see if she wants to add anything. Thanks, Oliver. I think you've covered really quite well the kinds of uh, challenges we have facing us. But I would like to invite Anne Williams Outlaw to introduce herself to the group. Sure. Thanks, Joanne. Um, my name is Anne Williams Outlaw. I work at the American Institutes for Research on two of our knowledge translation centers, uh, this one, the KTDRR, and KTER, which is Knowledge Translation for Employment Research. And I'll be the managing editor of the Disability Coordinating Group. And my role um, is more of kind of behind the scenes, where I'll be helping with the procedural aspects of the editorial process, as well as providing assistance to the group editors. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Oliver and Carlton um, and uh, Dr. Westberg on a previous systematic review, so I understand some of the challenges and the highlights of working on a systematic review in the Campbell collaboration. And so I'll be, I'm happy to serve on this role. Thank you, Anne. I'm looking at the clock and realize that uh, we really don't have much time left. We've only given ourselves 30 minutes and we just have a few. So I'll hand it back to you, Marcel, knowing that we need to um, speed it up a little bit. Thank you. We're going to speed it up as much as we can. Uh, there is an advisory board uh, as of now consisting of eight people, and you see uh, the names listed here. Um, I eyeballed it and yeah, found a strong recommend, uh, representation from people working in medical rehabilitation. Uh, but yeah, I think it would be useful to explore uh, adding to this group uh, some people from psychiatric rehabilitation, uh, maybe uh, yeah, uh, more vocational rehab people. Uh, and yeah, I see some other opportunities to 
make this a group that really can uh, give good advice to Oliver and Joanne and through them to the rest of uh, the group. Um, how can you uh, participate? Well, anybody can become an affiliate of the group and yeah, that just requires you to express an interest and yeah, uh, we'll sign you up. Uh, for people who have the qualifications and yeah, do participate actively in the work of the group, uh, a status of member is available and yeah, that uh, gives you the uh, right to vote on key decisions to yeah, be made uh, for the group, etc., etc. Um, yeah, if you yeah, uh, submit your name yeah, as an affiliate or yeah, express an interest and become a member, uh, yeah, your uh, contact information yeah, will be registered uh, by yeah, both the people yeah, specific to uh, this coordinating group and by the Campbell organization at large. You can do yeah, more than just saying, I'm interested or I'm willing to be a worker bee. And you can actually submit yeah, your ideas uh, for a systematic review. Uh, yeah, whether you want to take a lead position or another position um, in that, uh, that's yeah, up to you. Um, Here's the uh, contact information if you would like to receive more information on the coordinating group. If you want to make a uh, submission to Campbell, and yeah, as uh, Carlton indicated previously, uh, that would always start with submitting a title, which, as he indicated, is a little bit more than just a title, but essentially is a stake in the sand um, so that uh, yeah, the idea can be yeah, evaluated. Uh, the reference here is to the uh, forms that are available to do such submissions. If you would like to be a peer reviewer, uh, please submit your name. Um, yeah, with, of course, your country and affiliation and email address and highest degree, uh, but most of interest is yeah, to the people who are running the coordinator group is a solid description of your field of expertise uh, so that yeah, when there is a need for peer reviewers, uh, um, yeah, Joanne and Oliver, with quote unquote surgical precision, uh, can uh, yeah, select the people who would be best placed to uh, do peer reviewing, either of a protocol or later on of the full systematic review. And the nice thing is, Campbell has some money set aside to uh, provide an modest fee to its peer reviewers. Um, if it's yeah, specifically a um, systematic review that uh, is funded, at least in part, with NIDLER, uh, the Center for Knowledge Translation uh, can make its yeah, resources, some of its resources, that they get uh, under a grant from NIDLER available uh, for even yeah, more extensive help than yeah, is available through Campbell. Uh, here's a listing of various and sundry resources that are available to people who uh, would like to uh, submit a systematic review or just look at 
you know, what Campbell has produced this far, the resources available, the training at, available, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that's yeah available. So that brings us to uh, the end of what I had to say. We are already uh, one minute over the official ending time. Uh, I'm not going away. Uh, I don't think uh, Joanne Carlton uh, are going away or Oliver. Uh, and uh, yeah, but if you had only half an hour available. Um, yeah, go to whatever you needed to do next. If you have questions, we will yeah uh, try to answer the questions that you type into uh, the left lower hand corner. Uh, already yeah, saw one question coming through, which was, is there consistency in peer reviewers from the protocol review stage? to the systematic review stage, systematic review, peer review stage. And the answer was yes, to the degree possible. Um, Campbell will have the same people who reviewed the protocol later on review the systematic review yeah, once it's uh, completed. Uh, I did not have a chance while talking to read the uh, various uh, uh, comments that uh, came by in the left-hand column. Um, Joanne, and did I miss another question that I could or should be addressing or you should be addressing? Um, I don't think we missed any questions, but we did miss some interesting comments. And let's see. Oh, here we go. There is a question. Whoops. No, that's the same question that you just answered. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, we did have an interesting comment from Elizabeth saying that she and her colleagues have uh, established quality indicators for reviews in their field of special education following the Campbell guidelines. And they'll launch a Delphi study of those indicators this summer. That sounds uh, does sound very interesting. And Elizabeth is with the University of Illinois at Chicago in the Department of Special Ed. So okay. let's see if anyone else does have a question. Uh, please go ahead and write it there in the chat box, or you can call our 800 number or um, you can use our email address of ktwebcast at AIR.org. OK. Uh, and while we give people a chance to type, uh, Elizabeth, uh, thank you for volunteering that information. Uh, yeah, as you may know, uh, yeah, various people associated with the KTDRR yeah, uh, have been interested in the issue of yeah, the quality of systematic reviews, uh, did develop an instrument called AQASAR, uh, AQASR, uh, that is yeah, freely available on the KTDRR website. Um, so yeah, we might uh, yeah, uh, have some yeah, information uh, from you, and possibly once you yeah, have finished your uh, Delphi study, uh, maybe have you do some presentation yeah, for the community of practice, uh, maybe in the fall of this year. If, yeah, that fits with your timeline. That, that's a great idea, Marcel. We'll definitely follow up on that. Yep. OK. Uh, Joanne. Not seeing any it. questions, so maybe we should go ahead and wrap everything oh, up. We, um, we still have two people typing. Oh, there we go. Uh, OK, let's hang on then. We'll see. Said she would love to do that, so that's good. And uh, <laughs> Jen Weaver is typing as fast as she can. 
uh, everybody you also noticed that Joanne typed in the proper name and the web address for the instrument I refer to. Yeah, Equasar, A-Q-A-S-R. So, uh, okay, Jen is asking, can you talk a little bit how an experienced reviewer can assist with the process of conducting an SR? Uh, and Jen is referring to one of the slides in the very beginning. I will try to... Uh, I think it might have been with the goals of the disability coordinating group. So maybe pass that, pass that. Undertake and maintain a series of high quality timely reviews, etc. cetera. Um, I see various possibilities. Uh, one is you indeed can uh, propose that you and uh, colleagues uh, perform a particular systematic review, and you would start with yeah, writing what uh, is called the title. Um, yeah, once that has been given the green light, uh, I presume that yeah, the coordinating group can uh, help find additional collaborators on something like that. Um, a second way you could help is to uh, register yourself as a um, uh, peer reviewer, uh, somebody who based on your expertise in a particular area uh, of uh, disability and rehabilitation studies uh, is willing to uh, review uh, protocols and then later on the systematic reviews. Uh, if you are strong in you know, methodological issues uh, for systematic reviews, you may want to uh, see whether you would be a suitable uh, peer reviewer yeah, for uh, methodological issues, um, and yeah, then of course uh, you can yeah, be an active participant in whatever discussion yeah, goes on within the coordinating group, uh, sign up as um, a member of the group, and yeah, are available to uh, yeah, help out in various and sundry areas. Slide seven, she referred to. That's where we were. Okay. And I've got no idea which slide is number seven. Uh, well, the eight. slide numbers are very tiny in the bottom, okay. so that was slide seven that we were just on. So you, you've got it. But um, okay, we got yeah. it purely by mistake. Uh, Jen, we did. We gave you the right answers. I promise right. it won't happen again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move back up to the end because I think we are about out of time now. And uh, just wanted to thank everybody for coming, and definitely want to thank the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research for supporting our activities in uh, these webcasts and other events. I'll go ahead and leave um, our contact information up so that if people would like to get in touch with us, please do. And I want to thank Dr. Marcel Dykers, Dr. Carlton Fong, Dr. Oliver Vent, and Ms. Ann Williams for sharing information with us, including how our listeners can get in touch to learn more about the Disability Coordinating Group. Um, we hope you'll also take a few minutes to give us some feedback by filling out our brief evaluation form, and we will be sending an email with this link to everyone who has registered ahead of time. I want to thank everyone for coming today, and thank the AIR staff that help with planning and logistics. We, we, want you, uh, we look forward to seeing you for our next webcast, which actually takes place tomorrow at the same time. Visit www.ktdrr.org for the details. Thanks again for coming, and good afternoon. <laughs>